Join spiritual feminist and empowerment coach Joni Advent Maher for Trust Your Sacred Feminine Flow. Listen in for intimate conversations about money, transformation, and feminine sovereignty. And now, your host, Joni Advent Maher. This episode of Trust Your Sacred Feminine Flow is brought to you by She Gathers Beauty devoted to the soulful nourishment of your sacred journey. Welcome to Trust Your Sacred Feminine Flow. I'm your host, Joni Advent Maher, mystic, spiritual midwife, and transformational guide. And today I am so honored and delighted to welcome poet, healer, and guide, Wendy Havler Cherry. Welcome, Wendy. Oh, thank you so much, Joni. I am delighted to be here. Mm. And I am so delighted to have you. I said before we started recording that this is going to be our dive into devotion. So that's mm. my, my vision for our time together. Mm. Yes. So let me share a little bit more about the wonder of Wendy. Wendy is a devotional poet and a mindfulness instructor, instructor and a spiritual mentor. And she calls herself an MA3 because she holds three master's degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite impressive. I'm not going to go into all those details, but she's, she's got three master's degrees and she has spent a number of years training with Dr. Clarissa Pinkola Estes, who is the famed author of Women Who Run With Wolves. And if you haven't read that book yet, I think we both can soundly recommend it. Absolutely. Yes. So Wendy works with women and children individually as a mentor and a guide and in sacred circle, honoring and helping to bring forth the wisdom waiting to emerge as medicine for healing on all levels, the body, the heart, the mind, and the spirit through sacred storytelling, presence, trust, and empowerment. She's also the recent self-published author of The Reach is Holy, her first book of poetry, which is inspired by the sacred, which came out in 2017. And just recently, she wrote another book called, it's a book on devotion, and it was in collaboration with a numinous presence that delivered poetry to her in the dream time as an invitation to listen and trust the deep feminine that longs to be heard. And I think we're going to pause there because that is a really potent that's a really potent statement i want to just say that again this book that she's created that has not come out yet is a collaboration with a numinous presence that delivered poetry to her in the dream time as an invitation to listen and trust the deep feminine that longs to be heard Oh, so I just mm. want to drink that in. Mm. So I would, I, I would love to dive in there, Wendy, if you're if you're up for it. Yeah. What I would. You, yeah. What can you tell us about that or from that state? Mm. Well, I can tell you that um, the process of writing this book or co-writing this book really happened beginning on the spring equinox of 2018 mm. um, and uh, unfolded over and throughout the year. And um, it's so interesting. I'm um, actually in the process of working on getting the book published. And so um, you know, there, there are, uh, 
many details that I don't feel like I can share yet, but um, I am so ready to share this book that um, let me see what juicy um, (laughs) (laughs) tidbits feel really good now to share. Hmm. Um, So basically what happened for me is that um, many years ago, I started receiving um, messages in my dreams, Hmm. um, and, uh, really took them to heart and began to experience the divine and the sacred feminine and, um, really started becoming familiar with my spirit guides Mm -hmm. and my allies, if you will, um, through my dreams. And on the spring equinox of last year, a poem was delivered to me by Mm -hmm. a new guide who Mm -hmm. was coming through. Um, And many of my poems have been inspired from my dreams, but I've never received up until then an actual poem as a gift through the dream time. Mm. And so this book really started from that poem. And um, I, I knew that there was something special about this poem. I knew that this was not my poem. I knew that this was something that um, was coming through as a gift for all of us. Mm. Um, but when it came, I wasn't exactly sure um, mm. what was wanting to happen with it. And that's basically the starting point of the book that I allowed myself to simply be with throughout the year until another uh, poem came um, that made it pretty clear what was asking to happen. And um, that began a process really of co-writing. And, um, you know, it's funny for me to say, because I never really have considered myself someone who is a medium or someone that channels but that really is what happened with Mm -hmm. this book Mm. and um in november i sat down and just said okay give me all the the juicy details and for several days wrote the book as it came through me until it was complete Mm, mm, mm. beautiful Mm. Well, I know you had also shared with me that that the reach is holy, that there was a, we had talked about you sharing a poem from that book. And I think you had said that that was the first time you had received a poem ever. Is, is it, am I correct in that? Yeah, that's true. And it didn't, it didn't come through in the dream time. It came it came in the shower of all places. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, It came as um, really a felt experience in the shower. And then, um, yeah, how to articulate this is interesting. So it happened as a felt experience in the shower. And then as I was getting out of the shower and you know, doing what one does when, when they have finished bathing and they're getting dressed and that sort of thing, this, this poem and this experience, um, sort of became like this little, very obvious altar, uh, Mm -hmm. built out of words for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So will you share the poem with us? Yeah, I would be honored to. So it's the very first poem um, in my book, The Reach is Holy, and it's entitled Emergence. And, um, Mm. it goes like this. There was nothing. And then there was you combing my hair. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That's 
That's all. It's, it says so much. It's brief, but it says so much. I was very grateful that it said so much when it, when it said it, <laughs> um, because it was a very dark and difficult time. And um, I was moving through an incredibly deep depression and lots of confusion and really felt very alone. And um, to have this presence come in such an obvious way mm. um, was really breathtaking. And I feel, I can feel the, you know, I can feel sort of that same movement happening inside as I'm sharing this with you, mm -hmm. just thinking back to that moment. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to experience it again in this way. Mm. You're welcome. And and so is that really where your poetry, your journey with poetry began and being a poet mm. or poetess? Yeah, that's, um, this poem was not uh, the first poem that I, that I wrote um, or had an experience with, but it was around the same time that I did, that I started writing poetry. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was the, it was the first time that any of my, uh, poetry was ever published. I was working with, um, uh, sort of a, a poetry, tutor or guide, I guess you could say, and he really pushed me to submit my poems to some different publications, which felt incredibly scary, especially as such a, a young poet, I had really just started writing. And um, this poem, I was shocked, is, was the one that was selected um, to be published by the Santa Clara Review. Um, so, so yeah, it was during a time when um, things were really starting to open up for me, and it was kind of a portal, honestly, into my relationship with the divine and with the sacred feminine, um, and opening up to writing these these poems and and sharing them, being mm -hmm. vulnerable and sharing them. Mm hmm. Mm. So prior to that, had you done any, uh, what would I say, like any creative, like were you a creative writer or did you, it just, it was a season or a time in your life where it's like, now I want to explore poetry or it found you? Wow, that's such a great question. Um, you know, I have always been a writer. Um, in fact, when I was really little, I wrote a little book about my dog and <laughs> <laughs> complete with illustrations. And I wish so much I, I, that I still had that, but oh, yeah. um, I was an academic writer. Um, mm -hmm. And so really up until that point, all of my writing had been an exploration through um, academia. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say that it was during my time at St. John's, um, actually, when I was studying the Eastern classics and I was reading um, about devotional poets in India mm -hmm. and starting to really explore Hinduism and, um, and Buddhism and... Um, the world just opened up inside of me mm. and I wanted to experience what I was learning. And, mm. um, and I think that that was really the beginning of these poems. Hmm. Right. So one of your master's degrees is in Eastern. Eastern classics. Classics. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, Right, so it opened this portal for you that that 
perhaps were the latent seeds of what was to come later. And and then what about the feminine? Where where did your journey was it with the work with Dr. Um, Estes or Pinkola Estes or you yeah, know I have. really yeah I think that um, I think that my experience with the divine feminine um, and opening up to um, that exploration really began yes when I read for the first time women who run with the wolves i was 24 years old Mm. and um i was going through a divorce Mm. so i was this young woman who was starting to really peel back the layers of her wounds Mm. and um i was working with um uh, a wonderful therapist. And, um, she said, read this book. (laughs) And, um, and so I did, and it really did change my life. And I think that, um, you know, at the time when I was reading, um, when I was reading, you know, Skeleton Woman, and when I was reading about the Baba Yaga and all of these incredibly powerful feminine forces, um, I I don't know that I was necessarily articulating it and forming it yet that it was about a feminine presence. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was definitely starting to form at that time. I would say later in my, um, in my late twenties, early thirties is when, um, the divine feminine started really coming through, through studying Shakti, you know, about Shakti and, Mm -hmm. um, reading different ancient, um, books in Sanskrit or trying to, I should say, it's such an incredibly different, uh, difficult language, but it was really in those old texts of India and being introduced to like the poet Mirabai, Mm -hmm. who was a devotional poet, you know, in India. Um, it was really then that I started just sort of opening up to what is this divine feminine? And, um, thankfully, we have been together ever since. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I know one of the things I really love about your poetry, uh, which which I get to read almost daily because you're posting on Instagram, which I love that. So mm. we'll tell folks how to catch up with you at the end. But what I love about it is it is it's so sensual, um, and it it feels so. Uh, it is like the blend of the sacred and the body, like that essence, that sensual essence of the body. And it, you just really transmit that very powerfully. Um, mm. Wow, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. And in fact, I was going to see if you would read, I know I'd asked you, to read the, I can't remember if it's the grand seduction, (laughs) the grand seduction, but if you would read that and share that with us, because I loved that poem and maybe Mm -hmm. even share how, how you were inspired, because I know it's a more recent poem for you. Yes, yes. yes. It's the grand seduction was um, written um, because of the muse of Venice. I was recently in Venice, Italy. Mm. Um, I had the honor of going to be there to, um, co-officiate a wedding for a dear soul sister of mine. And, um, the waters of Venice and, um, the, museums and the history really conjured this poem for me as did the people Mm. and the food and the light and you know the way the light hits the water and the Mm. buildings it just was such an invitation to 
keep coming home to my body and mm -hmm. to my imagination. Um, and so this is the grand seduction. I want to tell you, there is fire inside waiting to warm you. Your light brightens everything and everyone around you, hmm. especially you. Every time you wear your passion, become more of your own intoxicating fragrance. Dig your hands deep inside what you love. Hmm and run your fingers over the pearls of your desire. Hmm. I want to show you the book you wrote long ago with divine hands and pierced heart. Open your story you promised to remember. Your palms are still holy. Your radiance delights the stars. They are waiting for you to see. You are your own exquisite intervention. Mm. Uh, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm just overcome. Mm. It's it's so it, it's such a transmission and I mean for my experience as as someone who uh, identifies as a as a mystic like your your way with words and your ability to express um like that felt sense is so it's like such a gift. Yeah. It's such a gift to know like, yes, <laughs> one, yes, other people sense in this way too. And, and two, of mm -hmm. course, it's such a deep portal into the, the sensory experience and the, the, the awakening of that remembering. Uh, so I, I know that's how I experience it. And I, it's it's different for each one of us but it's it's part of why i was like yes yes i know i need to have you on the show <laughs> mm. oh. it's so magnificent to um to hear your words and to hear that reflection mm. um, yeah I really, I really want to name that because um, I mentioned this before we started, before we started recording that, you know, uh, sometimes being a poet, <laughs> you, you, I write uh, because I must, but, yes. um, and there's also something about offering it out um, al almost daily um, that feels like the part of creating and then letting it dissolve. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I don't often get to have conversations like these. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the world at large is not always um, swept away by poetry. So um, this, this is just this is such an honor so thank you for everything that you just named mm. my my great great pleasure and it to me it feels important to share in a way because what's coming through you is brilliant but I you I don't know maybe you'll agree with me maybe you won't I I don't know that you are necessarily unique as in the only person who could bring forth 
this you are the only person who could bring this forth but but mm-hmm. i believe that we each have the capacity to to open and enter that relationship with with whether it's the feminine or the divine or what wants to move through us and be expressed in the world and you have said yes to that to your mm-hmm. version Yes, and that is when I'm working with others, that is my my biggest intention is that I get to show each soul that I work with Mm. exactly what you just said. We all came gifted. Clarissa Pinkola Estes says that a lot. You know, we all came gifted in some way. And And that is so incredibly sacred and the world needs each of us to be um, aware of our own gifts and then to share them in some way, no matter what they are. Yes. Yes. And to, to learn that we can trust in that and partner with it in the way you, you so aptly described uh, in this, this book that's about to be, birthed that entering into that partnership and uh, I know for me when I'm in that state it, it's like my greatest joy hmm. uh, I don't know if that's true for you but it certainly has been my experience yes me too I mean that I would say that is my my devotion and my being and and relationship in that way is um, as good as it gets. And it's, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's what I long for, you know, all the time. And so when it's happening, it's, um, I really do try to um, let it envelop me mm. in all the ways that I, I can. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I want to go back to something you named much earlier, and that is a, a theme that I hear you, uh, or I see you, hear you putting out frequently, which is this idea of altar or altars. Mm-hmm. And, and you used your first poem, I think you used the word that it was like a, an altar. And I would love to hear you share just more about that whole idea of altars and building off altars, etc. Yeah, of course. I um since I was a little girl, I've been building altars. <laughs> and <laughs> I built altars in my room and during nap time. <laughs> <laughs> I build altars outside, um, you know, with little dandelions and blades of grass and Mm -hmm. uh, little stones. And I think it's something that I've just been inclined to do all of my life. It's like a way for me to place order um, Mm -hmm. amidst chaos. (laughs) It's a way for me to um, remember the truth. Mm. Um, And it's also a way for me to like lift the veil um, to reveal that the sacred is right here every moment, no matter what uh, we think we're seeing that there is something else that can be pierced. Um, and um, I, I, I mean, I think we each are an altar. Um, I love and that. I, yeah, it's just when I, when I work with others, um, oftentimes altar building will become an organic part of what we do together. Mm. Um, And I, in my office, I actually keep a sort of uh, community altar for 
people to add to when they're here as a way of sacred reflection, a way of being able to mark the moment of, of where they are and mm-hmm. where they're wanting to go and where they've been. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me, I often uh, refer to my poems as altars built out of words. Mm-hmm. And that's why. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that, that's what I was so struck by uh, that piece. And I, I think you've also, in some of your poetry, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like referred to the body or, or different aspects of the body, like, like an altar or as an altar. Am I absolutely. remembering that? <laughs> you are. You, you're absolutely remembering that. Yes. Yes. Our bodies are exquisite altars. I mean, they, yes. yes. I have a little poem. I think it's called the truth about softness. It's in the reach is holy. And, um, it actually came about during a, a group, a sacred circle. And, um, it was sort of a little spontaneous reflection that I, made into a poem and it is my body is my blessing she holds my heart um Mm. yeah one of the deepest ways in my view that we can connect to our truth and sacredness is through the doorway of our hearts and so what better altar is there um than the altar of our heart that's tucked away inside our skin and our bones and our blood, which is this just radiant altar that's ever changing, Mm. you know, that we try (laughs) really hard (laughs) to manipulate and control and do all of the things that, that we do as humans with our bodies. And yet um, the body stays so incredibly in love with our spirit and our soul and stays with us. Um, <laughs> I love <that>. yeah. <laughs> Despite all of our betrayals, yeah. prodding, yeah. Or, yeah, efforts mm. to control. Yes, yes. Especially, I think, as women. Woo! Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Like, to conceive of our body as an altar you know, what a counterpoint to the prevailing message we're receiving. No kidding. No, yeah. No matter, yeah, no matter how conscious or far along a path of growth or spiritual development, I mean, we are just not immune from the cultural messaging. So, to, not. yeah, to receive it so potent, like, no, really, the truth is, your body is an altar is mm, so important. I feel that that's, um, you know, that's, I think that that's one of my biggest uh, wounds, if that's what, you know, Mm -hmm. you want to call it, but that, that is a constant practice for me. (laughs) And my dog, Roland, is affirming that, I guess, <laughs> in the background. Um, but oh. yes, really working with my own devotion to my body and how she's serving me daily, even when I might be buying into a, a different story mm. um, that causes deep suffering on some level. You know, it, it, it feels like such a practice to work with Mm, and I I don't know about you but for me when I am in my body you know when I am having the experience of like centrally being in my body Mm. there's such a difference than when I'm like looking in the mirror at my body Mm-hmm. You know, like the disconnect that comes with that visual 
scanning, but, but when I can really inhabit my body, there's so much more freedom and the, the juiciness, the vitality, the, the, I don't know what I'm kind of moving and (laughs) like, this is without words. I'm gesturing, which obviously is not very effective in this medium, but (laughs) (laughs) yeah, such a difference. So, mm. yes. Yeah. It's like you're seeing with different eyes and having a complete whole experience. Yes exactly right and the the yeah just the visual which is such a gift you know it's such a gift to be able to see the beauty in the world Mm. but we're so trained to not see the beauty in our self whether it's our physical appearance or our our gifts as you say or you know we we just have been trained to not see ourselves clearly so it, it's an interesting it's an in, interesting challenge mm-hmm. but i i love again that idea of the altars mm. Mm. and the truth about softness <laughs> Because as we reach a certain age, and my guess is probably the age that we're both close to, and we really do start to get softer in some ways, Mm -hmm. physically, and less whether it's less firm or less whatever. Right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And to, like, to celebrate that or to honor that or receive the gift of that and you know it just dawned on me as you're saying that how perfect the timing is because when that softness begins to occur we're also more available to being able to see the softness for what it really is Mm. I mean I know that if this started happening when I was in my twenties or thirties, even (laughs) my early forties, you know, that this would not have gone down well. (laughs) (laughs) I hear you. (laughs) Yes. Right. To have the maturity and the depth of perspective and capacity to, to receive it more as a gift maybe Mm -hmm. not yet entirely but at least yes yes absolutely Mm. Mm -hmm. all right so i'm going to circle back i i want to share just another piece from your your bio because it it says when when you refer to your life's work You believe that your purpose is to be a student of devotion and to call us all back to the sacred that we already are. Mm -hmm. So it's like another another level of that and and that for you, your devotion shows up in that way. Yes. Yes in your service and and maybe you want to tell us a little bit about both the things that you offer and the way that you work and yeah sure i am you know what what comes up for me so strongly um when i think about what you just said is a very young part of me a very um young innocent knowing um, of me that remembers Mm. what the sacred really is in a way that is free of um, free of words and free of thoughts and buy-ins and all of the things that can come with this human path. And um, there's something very fierce about that sort of use 
youthful um, knowing of mm-hmm. sacredness mm-hmm. that is just, uh, it feels very uh, bold and unstoppable. <laughs> um, and knowing that each of us moves through our lives uh, with different experiences of suffering, tremendous suffering, each of us in our own ways. Mm. Um, And knowing that our sacredness cannot be removed. Mm. It came with us, it stays with us, and it will leave with us Mm. is If there's anything that I can do with another human being when I'm working with them, that is my main hope to be able to do that, Um, to be able to reflect back that no matter what they have experienced or who they are, what they long for, they are sacred and that cannot be removed. Mm. So yeah that is my that's really my everything and when i'm working with another being um i like to use my um my experience and my training as a therapist and my experience as um someone who's been practicing meditation and mindfulness for many years now to as well as my intuition to be able to stop and understand what are the best tools for this person that I'm with or with this group that I'm working with Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel very blessed to have um, many tools that I can use depending on um the scenario so it could be um it it could be writing prompts and meditation or it could be um you know some shamanic practices of really going deeply within and retrieving soul medicine um it could be building an altar um but it will always be helping someone identify what it is that they really long for so that they can claim it Mm. and um and not feel separated or shamed or um like they have to hide aspects of their selves Mm. um yeah Mm. and you so you work as you said, one-on-one, you also do work in circles. And Mm -hmm. if someone were interested in exploring your work, I I know uh, you have offerings on your website, but signing up for your, your newsletter is the best way to kind of stay in tune with those things. Yes, absolutely. So if they want to uh, learn more about what I'm up to, I send out a newsletter twice a month Mm -hmm. um, for the new moon and the full moon. And I often share poetry there, um, but I'll also share um, upcoming offerings, including um, new groups that might be happening both in person and virtually or different ways that Um, someone could work with me individually. Mm, Wonderful. And I, I highly recommend signing up for Wendy's list, which is at her website, which is she gathers beauty.com. And I highly recommend (laughs) following her on Instagram and checking her out on Facebook as well, because I will say for me, my Instagram feed feels like a cross between an altar and 
just like a gift, a mini little gift. So I, mm. I follow people like you who, when I tune in there, it, it is like this morsel of goodness and truth and light and divinity that just comes through. And, and mm. you, I consistently look forward to your posts. Oh, Jenny, um, thank your you. Poems. You're welcome. And you, you are so committed and um, consistent. So I appreciate that. Mm, thank you. Yes. So we're, we're getting close to when we need to end, but I, I wanted to ask one question that I love to ask all my guests is from your vantage point today, what you would say to your younger self. Mm. And that can be younger at any stage. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Such a potent question. I think that there are two words that come quite quickly, and that is trust yourself. Mm really learn to listen to that you know what some people refer to as their the small quiet voice or the inner promptings that come and really give yourself permission to trust that that is bone knowing that that is wisdom and that it will guide you well mm. Hmm. That's, that is uh, worthwhile wisdom for, for all of us, no matter what our age is, just that remembering that we're, that we are worthy of trust. And one of my favorite mystics is, uh, poets is Hafiz. And so mm -hmm. I, I always close with his, statement to always trust what your heart knows so i appreciate mm. <laughs> i appreciate mm. you bringing that through for us mm, even yes. before we get to the end <laughs> <laughs> yes yes that's beautiful yes so we do need to bring this to a close but i i also want to share because i love this that um that Wendy lives, you live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amazing place, with your husband, and that you have a furry, four-legged, who we heard from earlier, Roland <laughs> the Great. So is that yes. his official title? <laughs> <laughs> that, is, um, that is my official title for him. Yes, he is, he is a, a big boy, both uh, <laughs> physically and in spirit. So, yes, Roland the Great. I'm glad that he uh, piped up while we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything else you want to share, offer, say, acknowledge, witness before we officially bring this to a close? Hmm. You know, I am. Um, Something you'll see me write often, Joni, and I hashtag it, and I often like to write it um, when I sign one of my books for someone are the words, you are sacred. And um, I know we talked a lot about that today, and I just, I love those words. And so if there was any one message that I could ever share with someone it would simply be those you are sacred mm, let's all breathe that in together mm -hmm. so i i want to thank you for wendy wendy for generously sharing with us and and being here and and saying yes to your devotion that keeps the poetry coming and your transmission coming. Oh, thank you, Joni. This has been such a huge honor and mm. I have loved every single second. 
Yay! <laughs> happy dance! Yay! Yay me too. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. And I, I want to thank you, our dear, beautiful listener for being with us. And I, I truly hope that all of your being has been able to take in both the message that you are sacred and, and just the, the beauty that Wendy shares so, so easily and, and freely. Hi there, listener. I have an exciting update If you have enjoyed everything you've heard in my conversation with Wendy, you're going to be as excited as I am. The project she mentioned in our conversation has been picked up by Woman Craft Publishing. She will be publishing her newest book, The Mistress of Longing, due out in late 2019. For the latest updates on that, You can sign up for her newsletter at shegathersbeauty.com. Thanks for listening to Trust Your Sacred Feminine Flow with Joni Advent Maher. If you like what you heard, the best compliment you can give us is to share our podcast with a friend and subscribe, rate, and review our podcast at iTunes. 